going to start to draw out our planting designs on paper, but before we get there, we need to understand how different types of plant materials are used in the garden. Plants play very specific roles in a planting bed, and this is based largely on their form or their size. So we'll take a look at several of these different plant functions, starting with an accent. Now an accent is our focal point or center of interest in the garden. It doesn't necessarily need to be very large, it just needs to be unique and different from its surroundings. And in this shady garden, our Japanese maple serves as an excellent accent. And some of the characteristics that set it out, um, it is larger than some of its surrounding plants, but it also has a very unique uh, texture. The leaves have a very fine texture, and it also has a little different coloration. The stems and the leaves have this nice red coloration as well. Now in the winter time when these unique leaves fall off, the tree has this very intricate branching pattern and that continues to set it apart from its surroundings throughout the winter months. And in the springtime, as our new foliage emerges, it again has this really nice red coloration that continues to add interest. Our accent is surrounded by supporting plant material. And the supporting plant material serves to tie our accent into its surroundings. We can think of using our supporting material by flanking our accent, placing some of it to the right and some of it to the left and somewhat in front of our accent. And here we have a nice grouping of hostas serving this purpose on one side and on the other side it's flanked by a group of hardy begonias and some toad lilies. Now we typically plant our supporting material in mass like we have with our hostas here and the reason for that is if we had a single plant of several different species planted in here this would become very jumbled and confusing and it would distract from our accent. Uh, at different times of the year, one group of our supporting material might become more prominent than another. The hardy begonias are certainly eye-catching when they're in bloom, but overall their role is secondary to that of the accent, our Japanese maple. A planting bed may have more than one focal point or accent. Um, the number of accents that you can use in a bed is going to depend on the amount of space available. If you have too many accents close together, they lose their individuality. So you want to make sure you have plenty of room around it to set it apart. Now this planting bed has two accents. We have our amber maple and a cherry plum. And when you're using more than one accent, it's a nice idea to select plants with different forms and or sizes. So for example, our amber maple has multiple trunks and more of a vase shape to it, while the cherry plum has more of a rounded canopy. It also has the purple foliage which sets it apart from the amber maple. Another role that plants play in the landscape is that of a backdrop. The backdrop sets the stage for our accent and its supporting plants. Now the backdrop can also serve a dual purpose of screening out uh, an undesirable view or a neighbor's home. And that's the case here. We have a parking lot and a power plant back there. Uh, they're being shielded. And the backdrop can be plant material like these Hollywood junipers, trellis, it could be a fence or a wall. It can even be just a mass of flowers. It's not necessarily the size of the backdrop that's important, but how it relates to our accent. Plants can also be used to transition from one element to another. Transition plants can soften abrupt changes such as uh, changes in scale from a high tree canopy to a ground cover or changes from a tight and closed space to a more open space. And this dogwood here serves that purpose or as we move from the more enclosed woodland garden into a more open lawn area, the dogwood provides that transition in scale. Likewise, over here, we have a garden underneath the canopy of a pine, but the canopy is brought down stepwise from the pines to the red bud, down to the nine bark diablo, and finally to our annuals at the ground level. If we went just from the pines directly down to our annuals, that would be a really abrupt change in scale. 
We can also use transitions on a smaller scale to move between two very contrasting textures or colors. And we can also use mass plantings to act as a transition between two very different areas in the garden. These impatiens here serve that purpose. They're separating our romantic garden from our cut flower garden, two very different areas. Now when we plant annuals in mass like this, or even perennials, they act as a ground cover. Even though they're not the low spreading type of plant that we typically think of as a ground cover, they serve the same purpose. This sedum is more typical of, of what we think of as a ground cover. It's low growing and spreading. And technically a ground cover should be no more than about eight inches or so. Ground covers are very effective at unifying a garden. And we should use them by repeating them throughout the bed, kind of pulling it all together. They can also be used to sort of underline an accent or focal point. Well, we've discussed many different roles that plants play, and they all seem to work together to support an accent. Now, of course, some of these roles can be played by hardscape elements as well. For example, this uh, water feature here is a very strong focal point in our patio, and it is supported by the low-growing lantana around it. We used also a complementary color scheme here to further accent our focal point. But it's important to point out that color is a secondary element to form and function. Selecting plant materials for our design can be a daunting task. But to overcome this design challenge, we want to think in terms of plant function and form and not plant name.